Okay, so for this video, we're going to look at making a strap, which is cut on the bias. Now what the bias is, it's a 45 degree angle to the grain line. So I've got this template here, which I can use to work out that 45 degree angle when I cut out my fabric. Other things you might find is you might find a ruler which has a 45 degree angle line which you would line up on your selvage or your grain line somewhere to get the right angle. The reason why we do our strap cut on the bias is then we can use these bias makers which make it really easy to perfect a straight and even strap. So that's what we're going to do today. Also a strap cut on the bias gives you a little bit of stretch as well. You don't want a strap that's completely rigid, you want it to be able to move a little bit with your garment as you wear it. So first step is we identify our selvage here, which is the finished edge of the roll, or the grain line, which you may be able to see running this way if you look at the weave of your fabric. But for us, you're better off using the selvage. So I'm gonna use my guide, this template, and I'm gonna line that up with the selvage, and it's gonna give me the exact line for the 45 degree bias. Then I can just draw that line in using a pencil or tailor's chalk. When you do this for your garment, you'll have to make sure your material here is going to be long enough for the actual strap length you're looking to create. Next, you have to work out how wide do you want your strap to be. Now, we have three different size bias makers. And the strap will actually end up being half the size of this width here. So if you look at this one here and measure it, that would be 80, sorry, 8 mil. Once finished, this one would be 12 mil, roughly, or just, just a little bit bigger than a centimetre. And this one here would be about half a centimetre once finished. So I'm going to use this one because I want to do quite a... Drop my ruler. quite a narrow strap so what I have to do is I have to work out how wide am I going to make this strip I'm cutting out on the bias so for this we actually cut it out double the width of that so if I have a look on my ruler I can see that that is it's just short of a centimetre so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out 2.2 centimeters okay so to get your bias the right size for this size bias maker it has to be double the width of that and the end product will be a quarter of the original width all right so i'm going to do 2.2 2. so i'm going to mark that on my line And then I can rule that together, making sure it's parallel with the original line. And go all the way to the edge. I think you can see it there. Right, so looking at that, that looks pretty parallel, which is perfect. That's what I need. So now I'm going to cut it out. And then we'll move over to the ironing board and I'll show you how to use the bias maker. Okay, so I've got my bias maker and my strap. And what I have to do is I have to feed it through this part here. 
so it comes out the other end. Can be a little bit tricky to begin with. Once it comes out the other end, gently pull it so it starts to fold it so that the folds meet or the two raw edges meet in the middle. Now what you do is make sure your iron is set to the right setting. So I've got cotton and I've got water, so I've got steam. And I'm going to very gently pull that bias maker along, keeping the tip of the iron really close and making sure that those raw edges remain in the center. You can iron that. So that is my strip that's been passed through the bias maker to fold it. So it has two folds on each side and the raw edges meet in the middle. Then what we do is we fold it over with our hands and really carefully iron that like that. And that's how wide our strap will be. So when you use the iron, you have to be real careful not to give yourself a steam burn. So as you can see, I'm just folding it over, making sure the raw, the folds meet, then ironing it along. When you have water in your iron and the steam setting on, it makes it a lot easier to get a real neat, crisp finish. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew my strap. Okay, so I've got my strap all ironed and ready to go. Ideally, your two folded edges here would line up and your stitch line should run just along those folded edges to close them. So I wouldn't recommend starting right at the end. You probably, because it's so thin, the dog feed teeth, these things here, are gonna struggle to pull that through. So when you make your strap, when you cut it, give yourself some extra length to work with. So you can start a little bit in and then you can pull your strap through as you go. So nice and close to those folded edges. And of course we'll start with a little reverse. Work out where on your presser foot you want to line up your strap so it's nice and even. And then you're going to stitch all the way, trying to keep nice and close to those folded edges. I find that it does help if you pull it along from the back because like I said before the dog feed teeth will struggle to pull something thin like that through so and again I'm going to finish a little bit before the end of the strap just because the machine probably won't like trying to do a reverse stitch that close the end. Alright, so that is my strap made. It's a real simple way to make a neat and narrow strap. You can do other widths depending on the bias maker that you want to use. So that's your strap. Easy.